there guys, it's Joey. So this is going to be a video for the YouTube Pagan Challenge and it's actually a catch up because I kind of got behind. Uh, I've, I'm behind a couple but I'm going to leave the couple that I got behind behind on <laughs> and just do the ones that I'm behind on and this week. So the one that I'm behind on is moon phases and what they mean to us and how we celebrate them and what is it about? I feel, like, I feel like that's the start to a really bad science show. What is it about the moon? <laughs> no. Right, okay. Also there will be singing of We Like the Moon because it is close to us. Uh, that's a joke showing my age. There you go. Right, anyway. Uh, so what does the moon mean? <laughs> the moon. We like the moon. What does the moon mean to me specifically? And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about, I mean, it's, it's obvious, you can give your obvious answers. Like most witches live by the moon and we practice magic according to the moon phases. And I think that is something which is interesting, but I think most people are aware of it and it's kind of <sighs> done. You know, it's kind, of, it's kind of covered, it's kind of accepted that we live by the moon. So I was thinking about why is it that the, the witches really look at the moon and it's something that just lifts us, you know, on a spiritual level. It touches our heart, it touches our soul. And for a lot of us, I think it does so more than the sun, at least I think so personally. I'm, and I've had to address that within my own sort of mind scape if you like about how uh, we look at the sun versus how we look at the moon and, and why we tend to favour one over the other and trying to sort of unpick that as sort of a, a conditioning that we place upon ourselves. More of that in the sun video I think. And I was thinking about times in my life when it really came into sharp relief how I felt about the moon and in some ways it's kind of a sad story because when I was young and I was desperate to get away and I was sad and I was feeling isolated, I would stare up at the night sky and feel better. And I would stare up at the night sky and it was the stars as well as the moon and just feel connected to something more than me. And when I was youngish, getting, obviously getting a bit older now uh, and, and thinking, you know, is there anyone out there who's ever going to be like me? Is there anyone out there who's ever going to understand me? Is there anyone out there who's ever going to really love me for me and, uh, you know, connect on a heart and soul level? And when I was feeling these things, I would be outside in the night sky, in the night sky, looking up at the night sky, not in the night sky, that would be a trick. Uh, looking up at the night sky and aching and feeling that aching and that, that, that emptiness inside and I would automatically look up in the night sky and I just had this feeling that you know somewhere someone in the world who would love me and was just like me was looking up at those same stars was looking up at that moon and that connectiveness is something that automatically sort of on a soul level shifted within me when I was looking at the night sky that I would go from feeling uh, alone and empty uh, to feeling a little bit more connected that you know somewhere out there was someone else was looking up at those same stars and I was always very romantic in this <laughs> in this notion um, but it's it stayed with me that it's a connective force that connects witches and pagans and, and just people uh, in terms of mystery and magic we all have quite strong feelings, I think, about the moon. I, th I don't know or have never met uh, a witch who, who doesn't feel strongly about the way that the moon affects us. And I think it's something to do with a power of transformation as well as it being a visible celestial body, it, the most visible celestial body. It's not that we can't uh, see other celestial bodies with the naked eye. Or, or there are others that we can, obviously. 
but the moon visibly in front of our eyes shifts. And from a historical perspective, you know, people would have looked up in wonder and not fully understand it. But does it mean any less to us today having understood the science behind it? I don't think so. I, I think it's still a heavenly body that we watch shift and change and uh, go through its cycle. And that's something that I think a lot of witches are very in tune with, the idea of living in cycles. Because a lot of us, not all of us, are in very, very deeply connected to the nature and the earth. And obviously that works in cycles, that works in seasons, that works in, in a circular motion. Uh, a lot of, I mean, it's a Wiccan based idea to celebrate the sabbats and, and the esbats and they all work in a circle and cycle but it's not exclusive to that path and I think it's, it's, it's always something very connective about those celebrations about celebrating the cycles and where nature is and the energies around us and it becomes sort of deep No, I don't want to say entrenched, but deep, sort of deeply woven into the fabric of being a witch, that we fall into these natural rhythms, these natural cycles, and we all kind of tend to define our own cycles and rhythms, uh, depending on who we are and what we believe and what we follow and whether we celebrate certain bits and pieces and whether we uh, perform rituals for esbats and, and sabbats and things. And we all kind of reach our own happy medium, I guess, with regards to how we work those uh, energies and, and cycles. I find myself falling into uh, natural rhythms where I often just create and craft and do spell work and do healing work and all the rest of it based on the moon patterns without even really realising it. It just becomes like a second nature to me and quite frequently when I've decided to do a particular spell I've written down, uh, you know, when I've done it and the time and the date and, and then I'll I'll know when the moon phase is but I'll go and, and check all the sort of astrological correspondences and nine times out of ten they're just, they're a natural fit and it's kind of listening to your intuition and your gut and your instincts and really feeling uh, out those energies and once you sort of fall into a natural rhythm with them, uh, you, it sort of comes into being quite naturally as far as I'm concerned, uh, in my particular path walking. So I think all of us probably have our favourite moon phase. <laughs> I wonder how many people have said how what their uh, favourite moon phase is. Mine is actually dark moon, new moon, um, which is when you can't see the moon at all. So I guess that makes me a little bit of a weirdo and I fully understand. I enjoy all moon phases but I really do enjoy waning into uh, full moon and new moon, uh, dark moon and new moon. So the full moon actually uh, exhausts me a lot of the time. Uh, I do work with it, I do uh, spell work and, and celebration around it, but it, it often leaves me feeling quite tired. Uh, I think it's, it's such an overwhelmingly strong energy a lot of the time uh, that when you're very, very sensitive to energies, it's kind of like, Ugh. And that's moon madness, so, you know, it's, it's a well-documented thing that people get full moon madness because of the uh, shift in energies. So I really enjoy new moon, dark moon, and it's associated with Mama, excuse me, associated with Mama Morrigan, of course. And I would say that the new moon is, to me, it feels like Mama Morrigan walking on the earth with bare feet. It's, uh, you can really feel her sort of enveloping you at the uh, dark moon, new moon. And dark moon, new moon is a good time for cutting away, letting go, and then the new moon is that limitless potential. And I just, I love that idea, that energy, that feeling of that, that breath of life, that first bit of growth, that limitless potential. I think that's a wonderful energy and it's my personal favourite out of the moon phases. I uh, probably shouldn't pick one, <laughs> the meme that says that I, I wish I could pick my favourite but they're also pretty. <laughs> I should probably be more like that but no, I have my favourite and, and that's it and that's why, <laughs> I guess. Um, in terms of celebration, I don't like to follow a set plan. This is possibly 
uh, the least Virgo thing about me. I don't like to have everything planned out to within an inch of its life, uh, particularly with regards to ritual and spiritual matters. I feel that it, it kind of just invites things to go wrong. It kind of uh, feels too structured and rigid to me and I never ever want my uh, spirituality to feel rigid. And I like to feel out how I'm feeling in that particular moon phase, that particular new moon or full moon. Uh, and depending on, excuse me, depending on how I'm feeling, depending on how the flow of things are going, depending on what my needs are at the time, uh, depending on how I'm feeling out those energies, depends on what I actually do with regards to actual spiritual practice, which is super helpful for anybody like, what do you do? I'm like, well, it depends. <laughs> I don't know, I, it's not, you know, an easy way to uh, perhaps describe it, but it's just the truth. That's how I, I go with it. I, I tend to uh, move about and change and, and shift depending on the cycle, depending on the different moon, depending on the energy around, depending on where I'm at, what my needs are, uh, what's going on in the world around me, and so on and so forth. So all of many, many different factors come into play with regards to what I'm actually doing uh, at any particular moon phase. I think we all live by the phases of the moon, and I think that's another way that connectivity comes into it. So I talked about looking up at the night sky and this aching and this longing and this personal transformation energy that works through uh, moon phases. And I love that shapeshifter energy. It's very Morrigan-esque. So the, the sort of shapeshifter thing, it's, I'm big on that. I love it. I think it's wonderful. And uh, the connectivity aspect of this comes into the idea that a lot of witches feel the same way about the moon. They're like, it's something other, it's something majestic, it's something magical, it's something you can watch transforming over uh, the month. And there's something about it that you, I mean, you can physically see like, like shapes on the moon and with the naked eye and it becomes very other because it's something that most of us will never be able to touch, you know, it, not without a whole lot of money and uh, easier space travel. But it's something that we all know is there and uh, feel very connected to it and it leaves us with a sense of wonder and awe and it's kind of otherworldly in its own right and it's kind of otherworldly in another way because it's kind of like a mirror and I talked a little bit like this in one of uh, my actual crafting videos because I did mirror work with the moon and in uh, regards to a particular crafting uh, but the moon reflects sunlight and that's why we can see it so it's kind of like a mirror in that sense that you know we see it because the way light interacts with it uh, versus coming in and the way we receive light signals and there's something very witchy about that, that very notion uh, witches see mirrors as uh, spiritual tools in a way, spiritual portals and, and you know there's folklore of traveling through mirrors, uh, there's spirit lessons to do with you know you shouldn't line up two mirrors is, is one of the ones that stayed with me in my consciousness like you know you can get spirits trapped between mirrors, you shouldn't have mirrors facing directly facing doors for the same reason, things like that and um, there's a rich folklore history across cultures with regards to mirrors and people will you know when people have died they, they some people will put uh black cloth over mirrors as well as over photographs uh, so the spirits don't get trapped and and all of this is, is all to do with the idea of the other world the void ancestors the dead and so on and so forth the void the otherness the other world and i think the moon for me is sort of keys into that feeling of it being otherworldly and uh, very much like a mirror in 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 the sky <laughs> a mirror in the sky i feel i feel like i've i've, I've uh, voyaged into crazy hippie territory now maybe don't know <laughs> so i think there's a connectivity there between how we view uh magical tools magical items of having a way of unlocking part of ourselves and mirrors of all forms do that you know we get a reflection of ourselves and it's also a 
in our minds a portal to unlocking something other and the moon does that too when you think about it it's a reflection of uh, of who we are as, as a people throughout time that we have always been slightly obsessed with the moon and you know without the moon the tides and the earth would get a bit fudged up and it's a very important heavenly body to our planet and its connectivity to the sea and water and emotions of course is another thing uh, which ties it to our consciousness of mystery and unknown because on this planet I think the last big unknown is the depths of the ocean where you know not fully explored discovering new life forms we don't know what's down there for the most part and it because the moon is so connected to the ocean it gives it that that sort of mystery that otherness uh, and of course we tie the symbolism of mystery and otherness to the divine feminine which I think for a lot of us is actually easier to connect to and it's there's a whole there's a whole uh, sort of vastly different and, and differing reasoning behind why a lot of us uh, easily connect to the divine feminine rather than the divine masculine and, and some of us have trouble with it. I think for a lot of people it's because they've come from a very rigid patriarchal religion and disliked the fact that there is no divine feminine so much that they kind of get full hog into the divine feminine aspect of it and for me I mean me it's all uh, probably tied up in more personal issues I've think but it's something that I try and address and try and rebalance every now and again uh, but again these are things that come up for a lot of us a lot of, a lot of witches who have come uh, perhaps from a, a more rigid background and, and want to embrace a divine feminine and I've looked up at the night sky and found something very mystical and mysterious about it and of course the night sky is one of the easiest ways to naturally traverse the world you know stars as maps we're slightly veering away from what the moon a little bit but it becomes that, that the natural compass the natural guideline the natural uh map to the map to the heavens map to the other world uh that can guide us around this this earth if we know how to read the stars things of that nature uh, I, I'm not huge into astrology myself personally. It all gets a little bit mathsy and confusing. <laughs> if, if anything bordering on maths, and I'm out. So just say, say no. Um, <laughs> had enough of that at school. Never want any of that again. And uh, but it interests me about how the energies influence us and have an effect on our lives. And I think the moon is perhaps the most recognisable one even within pagan circles so I think that I think a lot of us are aware and a lot of us are touched by moon phases and again that's a sense of connectivity of coming together uh, through the energies of the moon I think it connects us all as human beings and as witches so that's it for this video on uh, moon phases I hope I made some kind of sense and many blessings